Okay, thank you. I'm going to now be discussing ultrasound imaging of the salivary glands. This is something that I think is an interesting area from the standpoint of the fact that ultrasound really can provide a tremendous amount of information, both diagnostically and with regard to serving as a guide for biopsy. Um, obviously, we can use very high frequency transducers because these are very superficially located structures. We typically would use a linear array probe and color and power Doppler, uh, particularly important for mass evaluation or inflammatory processes. Normally, we do a bilateral examination since some pathology may be bilateral and not palpable in some cases like pleomorphic adenomas. Typically, we will evaluate the lower portions of the neck below the salivary glands for nodes possible thyroid problems. And of course, uh, unfortunately, ultrasound is not adequate for the deep parotid lobe because it lives behind the bone. So those lesions would need CT and MR. Obviously, when we think in terms of the major salivary glands, there are three. The two most commonly evaluated ones would, of course, be shown here, the parotid and the submandibular. There is also the sublingual gland. The parotid gland, as I think we all know, is located in the retromandibular fossa. It's anterior to the ear and sternocleidomastoid muscle and easily accessible. The facial nerve divides the parotid gland into the superficial and deep lobe. And as I mentioned before, the deep lobe is not visible by ultrasound. There is also the traversing of the gland by the external carotid artery and retromandibular vein, and that can be seen very nicely with color Doppler. Typically, the salivary glands are homogeneously echogenic, and this really depends, the amount of echogenicity depends upon the fat content of the gland. Remember also benign intraglandular nodes are common with regard to the parotid gland. Again, typical picture, nice homogeneously echogenic parotid gland. You can see the muscle coming under here, the uh, masseter muscle, and then you can see the division here posteriorly confirmed as part of the external carotid artery by the color Doppler. Again, the uh, facial nerve would be in that immediate area. And again, anatomically, uh, the color Doppler with the identification of the external carotid artery would confirm the location of the nerve.